everyone, and welcome to my very first tutorial. Uh, today I'm going to be walking you through a creation of a brand new shadow series. And uh, so here we are in, this is Project Jeremy. Um, it's uh, Caldari Permacub's uh, Tambers tool, uh, WebGL tool uh, on the internet. So you can, uh, well, we'll one day become Creator Studio if... Uh, T. Amber ever gets off his ass and actually does it. Uh, I tease, but um, so we're gonna select the the Knicks today. We're gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna create. Um, love this super curious. So I'm positioning it right now. Uh, the great thing about Project Jeremy is that even in a browser, you're able to uh, manipulate 3D space and select different types of backgrounds. That was a green screen, gray screen, black, which is really sexy. And then uh, what we want is the black. We're going to open up the Jeremy window. And I'm going to play around with the lighting a little bit. Uh, Jeremy allows you to uh, cast lights, which is pretty freaking cool. So you can see where I'm trying to get a hard edge shadow. Now, one of the tricks, though, if you're going to do compositions, which is what we're going to be doing, is, and you can't see me doing it, but when I get the lighting the way I want, I'm going to write down those numeric values so that we can keep them the same between ships. Uh, you won't see me do that a lot on here uh, because I just skipped that because it's really boring. But So now I'm setting the camera, so the uh, depth of field uh, on the camera. So for bigger ships, I try to get it a little bit higher than normal because it makes them look uh, bigger than they... It gives it a sense of weight, and part of what we're going to be doing today is trying to fake that a little bit. So here's my Master Shadow Series uh, PSD document. I'm going to turn off that Hive one, which was the last one that I had released before this, and we're going to uh, drop in the next that we took a screenshot of. One of the great things about uh, the screen I'm using, it's a 5K screen, so the screenshots are taken at 5K, uh, which is 4K plus... Uh, DPI, which is 144 DPI. So my screen, uh, instead of 72 DPI, which is normal screen resolution, uh, the screen takes screenshots at 144 DPI, which is super, super handy for the kind of stuff that we're going to be doing. So you can see I opened up the screenshot, and I'm going to be placing that into the master document. There it is. And then we're positioning it. Now, uh, one of the things, too, that I gave a lot of consideration or some consideration and thought to what I was doing ahead of time here, so I knew the kind of positions that I wanted. I also find it's very, very helpful for final comp if you uh, scale the, the uh, image down just a tiny little bit. So there's the next in position, which we really, which I really like. So I had already previously taken some screenshots of some Furblurgs, and uh, those are Galenti fighters, which may be coming out of this thing. So I'm just going to grab a whole uh, bunch of the ones that I had taken and place them in the document so I can see what I have. And again, when I was doing this in Jeremy, I kept the lighting the same. When there's numeric values on the lights, so the, all the lighting was coming from the generally the same direction doesn't always show up uh, immediately like that, but it'll help in the final composition when we get to this. So I'm naming the layers, you know, one, two, three, so it's easy to tell. So some of the screens I took uh, full res, some I took smaller, just to give me a nice variety of uh, fighters coming in and out of space. And I'm just going to pop these in, copy, paste. Now normally, um, if I was doing this, uh, myself uh, without the tutorial and I'm going to do it on one of them but normally I would take uh, two screenshots of every element uh, one against white and one against black and I'll show you the reason for that as we go along but in this case to keep the tutorial uh, as short as humanly possible I only did this on one of them and um, it's the big one for the front so I'll show it to you here in a second This one right here, we uh, I took two screenshots of it, one against white and this one against black. And the reason for that is for edge. And 
I find it um, not as important when I'm doing a color background or a nebula or a star field or a planet or something like that, but against black uh, specifically, you want to get the master uh, against black. So, and I took multiple screenshots of this one because uh, the lights blink on and off, so I wanted to try to catch the lights in a good uh, position, which this one's pretty good. So we're going to take this one, copy and paste it over. And then I'll show you how to uh, grab engine fields and light effects and stuff once we bring over the other one. So there's the black one. And now we're going to bring over the white one. Now the white one is we're going to use simply for alpha channel operations. We're not going to... Uh, be using that so it'll just decrease the opacity down to about 40 percent and, and make sure you don't scale anything and I'm gonna zoom in here and make sure the edges line up there we go turn the opacity back up to hundred percent and zoom back out and then I'm just gonna grab a, a quick alpha mat and go real quick alpha mat and turn off the channel I'm playing around with my tolerances a little bit on the alpha mat I want to get a nice there we go then go to the black channel and leave it on the outside pop a new layer and then get rid of some of this excess stuff you can see where it uh, it disintegrated the cockpit, which is fine because that's something that I want to play around with. So turn off some of the other layers so we can see what we're doing. And now that we've done all that, we can scale the sucker down a little bit. And you can see I have a little bit down there that I forgot about. So I'm going to grab a, a tool here in a second and get rid of that excess black. So just grab the polygon tool, zoom in, and we'll just get rid of this sucker. And then I'm trying to use as many actual uh, clicks on tools as possible during this so that I'm not hiding what I'm doing because typically I just use key commands for everything. So it's making it a little cumbersome for me, but there we go. So we'll just take off that little bit of extra black that was outside the screen when we did the alpha mat. Zoom down. There we go. There, goodbye. Now we can drag this ship back down and place it in the corner where we want it. And we don't want to hide the Galenti logo on the fighter, so we'll drag that back over a little bit. There we go. All right, so let's scale this down just a little bit more. Try to get a nice position. I'm gonna move the background a little bit. And you can see how those start to blend together a little. So we're gonna fix that later with some uh, depth of field and with some lighting. So not to be worried about right now. We're gonna get rid of. That layer, we don't need it anymore. And let's start taking a look at some of these fighters. Oops, I grabbed the wrong layer. There's one of them. That's a pretty good one. So we'll just get rid of the background on that. Select it out. And scale it a little bit and bring that up. Looks like a good trail behind ship. I'm imagining that the fighters have been launched from the hangar there and they're on their way out to squadron up and uh, attack some poor schmuck who's had the nerve to bother with this thing. That looks like a good mid third third fighter. Here we go. Scale that one down a little bit. And 
put that in the four right there. And then we need one smaller than that that's coming out of the... There we go. That looks like a good one. We'll get rid of the background. Grab that one somewhere in here. Like it's just come out of the hanger. A little smaller. There we go. And then position that. There we go. Yep. And then these other ones. Uh, looks like we have some leftover black on the big fighter. We'll just get rid of these. We don't need them. Delete. And then I saw that line, so I'm thinking we're going to have to get rid of that too. And you can see where the cockpit's gone. So we definitely want to take care of that. So there's that extra. I don't like extra blacks because they can come back and bite you in the butt later. We don't want that. We don't want to be bitten in the butt. So there we go. There's our basic composition done. So now we need to make everything look pretty and fix the cockpit of our All right, so now we're going to uh, color correct the supercarrier, the Vix. I'm going to do that and then so we're going to play around with the uh, color correcting just a little bit so I can get the uh, yeah, see, it's got a little bit of red in it, so that's why I do the auto. I never do auto. We're going to do this by hand. So first thing, uh, this is, again, a quick and down and dirty one, but we're going to do exposure, which I find uh, 40 over 40 is pretty good, so that's usually where I start. We're going to crank that uh, up a little bit and then crank up the gamma just a tiny little bit. And then um, we always have to make sure that we're, since we're doing on blacks, that we're uh, keeping a good eye on our info window up in the top right hand corner you can see there so then we're going to do vibrance uh, one of the things you'll find there we go about 40 over 40 usually but you got to do it by eye mostly but also uh, if you notice the every time the cursor rolls over i'm keeping an eye on the show info window so we can keep a good look at our values that's very very important Uh, in order to keep our color range, I'll scroll that up a little bit higher so you can see what the effects are. We don't want to get too unnatural looking. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Now we're going to... Normally what I do is uh, create some depth of field by hand. So I'm going to create a blur layer. I'll show you how to do that. Um, there's a new tool. I just got the updated version of Photoshop this week and I realized there's a new tool which is pretty cool. So we're gonna we're gonna show you that too but here's how you do it by hand. So you create two layers. Uh, one you Gaussian blur. Not too much but about eight or so and then um, I think that's pretty much what I picked there. And add a layer mask and then we're gonna draw a marquee across the middle. So the line across the middle at the top of that is where we want the focus to be. So then take the gradient tool and go from black to nothing in the layer mask and then invert the marquee and then do it again. And then that creates a tilt shift. That's how you create a quick down and dirty tilt shift. And then what you might do is take the airbrush tool and clean up the mask and do some other things in there uh, by hand so you can hit specific areas and different things but we're going to delete that that's normally how i would do it and now there's this new tool in uh, the updated version of photoshop called the blur gallery which comes with a, a preset and it's pretty cool i've been playing around with it a little bit and you can see the different fields that come up um this is again it's recreating exactly what it is that we were doing just a minute ago. But one of the great things about it is it's in this window and you can tilt the lines. You can rotate them. You can add, uh, you can move the lines up and down. You can do a lot more. Um, just all contained in this. There's really nothing, and I've said this before to other, when I've taught classes on Photoshop, there's really nothing that a plugin can do 
that you can't do by hand, but um, it depends how much control you want and uh, how much time you have in your hands and also what the final product is for. So in this case, you know, we're making wallpapers, uh, free wallpapers, so we don't want to spend a ton of time on it, but this, again, um, this tool might be something that I use quite a bit because it seems pretty slick. So you can, you know, click and drag that wheel there to set the value of the blur. And then you can scrunch um, and move and do all kinds of cool stuff. So I'm kind of digging it. It's been three days or four days uh, since that was upgraded, since I upgraded to the new Photoshop, which I believe is 2015.5, uh, uh, which is pretty nice. There's a lot of really cool stuff in the new Photoshop, and I wanted to show more of it today, but I still haven't had a chance to to really get to use all of it. There's a new um, there's new marquee t uh, selection tools and new masking tools and things which are pretty slick, but I don't feel like um, I have quite a handle on all of them yet. This one I've gotten a chance to use a little bit on the shadow uh, series wallpaper. So there we go. That looks really sharp. So we got the foregrounds and a little bit of a blur in the background, obviously, because it's way off into the distance. So that's pretty nice. And again, it one of the downfalls of not doing the black uh, mats, the alpha mats is what you saw there a minute ago, but we'll get back to that in a minute. So we're going to just do... There we go. We're going to get rid of some of these edges. We're going to do a quick contract, the mask, invert, and delete. It's really not <laughs> the way I'd normally prefer to do these things, but it's down and dirty, and these guys are way off in the background. So, again, you know, it's all about keeping in mind um, what the final product's going to be and what your eyes see. So we're going to do the same color correcting that we did on the, on the next to each individual, to each individual, I just said that, to the individual fighters. So we're going to crank up the gammas on these guys and roll over with the info button. Make sure they're staying true black. And then there's that one. We're going to do the same thing to it. Now this is the one right here. Uh, because it's pretty big, it should have been uh, done the other way. It should have been taken on black and then outfit with the white. And that would have gotten, see that halo? You can see a white halo around the dark edges of the fighter, of the second fighter. And um, we're going to color correct some of that out. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to fake um, fake the edge a little bit, anti-alias it. I learned this trick years and years ago doing uh, hockey cards for FLIR. And you take the blur tool, and I'll show you here in a second. We're going to... We're going to anti-alias some of the rough edges here. And this is really not the best way to do it, but it works. So scroll that brush down a little bit, and then we're just going to take the blur tool. And we're going to blur some of these rough edges just a tiny little bit. And you can see that white halo. That wouldn't be there if I had taken the time to make a black screenshot of this and we did the alpha mat the way we did the big fighters because you'll notice there's none of that on the big fighter but again this is not the hero ship so yeah. while we're here I'll do an edge there and an edge there and then I'm gonna increase the sizes just a little and there we go and then we hit some of the there we go okay and now the big fighter, the, our hero. And we'll do color, same things on it. We'll do the color correction. Just a little bit on that. I was on the wrong layer there, duh. Always make sure you're on the right layer. It can get confusing. There we go. Crank it up. And make sure we're still Color values are good. That's what we're doing right now, checking the blacks. Yep, a nice four color black. Now we gotta deal with this cockpit. And the edges look good. 
I don't see any major problems. I could go through and just click a little bit on that and take care of any rough edges. But I don't see any that I really need to deal with on this one. So let's take care of the cockpit. So you can see where we want that. And we're going to create a layer. Above that, I'm going to grab the pen tool. And I'm going to draw in the missing cockpit. And do some Pazir work here. We're in Illustrator. That looks good. Give us a nice smooth edge. We're only going to use two points on that and just close it off here. And you know what? We might need that thing, so I'm going to save the path just in case <laughs> something happens. We might need that later on. That's always a good idea to save your paths. Um, you never know when you might need them back. And now I need to know what color goes in there, so I'm going to open up a reference screenshot. See if I can find one of the. There it is. Oop. There we go. Open that. And I can zoom in here and grab a a color swatch from that. Yeah, that's gray. Okay. Yeah, that far edge was the pure color of it. And then we'll um <clears throat> there we go. <laughs> Looks funny now. I'm gonna drag that down underneath. See we are da da. Yep. Oh, we're not done yet. We're going to fix that up so it looks pretty. It looks kind of fake now, so we're going to grab that color, grab a little darker color of it. Oops. I need the... There, see? Good thing I saved that sucker. Although I could have grabbed it from the layer. I was going to do a quick gradient tour in there. Gradient from the dark up a little bit. Give me a little bit of... Uh, Shade and I'll grab the blur tool and blur these edges just a little bit. And I always thought it was cool that you could see um, pilots inside these fighters, so I'm going to give this guy a little personality. I think turn the opacity down just a little so it looks nice. So we're going to zoom in here, and I'm going to give it a little edge here. I think just a little highlight around the very edge. There we go. There we go. That looks pretty good. So, nice. There. Let's give that a little splotch of brown, of gray, I mean. Then I'm going to create a new layer and grab this dark color and get a small brush and I'm going to draw I'm going to draw in a hand waving at us. So, here we go. A little hand. Like he's giving us a little wave as he's passing by. It's kind of cool. Like pilots do, right? A little hand wave. Hey guys, I'm trapped in this fighter 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. But I still... Here we go. There's a little, little hand wave. And a little... Uh, give him a little glove there. Blend that in. There we go. He had the time to, he saw us and he gave us a little wave. It's always nice to add a little hidden treasure in there. That looks pretty good. Kind of cool with that. Now, one of the things we're going to do in order to make these things look like they're of one piece, uh, the blurring is really one of the things. Uh, the edges are another. The color correction is another. Um, and then there is... Uh, one of the most important things. I'm just gonna. There we go. Turn it down a little bit. Just seemed a little harsh. There we go. So the, what was I say? Uh, oh, the um, blurring, a depth of field, uh, that helps. It also gives the ships a sense of scale and size, and then uh, color correction, obviously, so they all look like they came from the same place. Lighting, and then. Um, the reason why we do the lighting all from the same uh, direction is because of what's going to happen next. We're going to uh, do some wonderful things with light color. Where did I forget? Oh, I'm going to put some engine trails on these things so you can see them because 
these guys are kind of disappearing. So there we go. I just picked a color from the hanger lights, and then I'm going to use that as the engine lights on some of these. There we go, just to highlight their butts a little bit, so they don't get lost so much. You know, that one doesn't really... I'll just put a little tiny one back here behind this big guy. There we go. That's a nice little touch. Yeah, so we're getting pretty far here. This is starting to look pretty good. Who knew? So I was just saying before, the lighting's all good. Contrast is good. It looks pretty good. The composition's good. We are definitely working in the golden ratio here a little bit. We've got the <laughs> the eye following from the little one, swirling around and spiraling into the middle. So I just uh, created a layer with the fighters on it. Basically merged all the visibles into one layer. So all those guys are on the same layer now. So I can turn on the nicks and the background. And I thought at first I was going to do a little bit of lighting on the fighters themselves to try to separate them out of the foreground, but eh, I'm not really sure I'm happy with some of that. So I'm going to, that mid guy is still driving me crazy, so I'm going to grab the blur brush and I'm just going to give him a little depth, hit some of these edges a little bit. Guys are all in focus, so yeah, just hit some of these a little again. With again, this is where you you know you kind of get used to seeing things. There we go. Just all wouldn't be in focus there. There we go. Yep. So this is lighting effects, and this is where we add color to the lighting. But again, I was going to do the fighters on their own layer and try to separate the main fighter a little bit more from the background. But I'm not really happy with the way this is going. And if you notice, um, the recording is messing up uh, my lighting. So the lighting panel is not showing the lights. Uh, luckily, I had all these uh, preset from the last one I did for the hive. So these are the hive lights. So it's not really... I tried opening it up a few times here to see. There should be uh, controls and things on the screen. And um, there's, they're not showing up. And uh, I think that's due to the, to the fact that I'm recording this. So um, I don't have the level of control that I'd normally like. Sometimes I have uh, the one, not the hive, but the um, the one before that, the angel one, or one of those. I had, I think, 12 lights, 12 different lights. Uh, that one, the hive only had three. So that's not really working out the way I thought. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new um, selection with just, with everything on it. There we go. And I'll just do all the lighting at once. I'll go back up here and render lighting effects. And I'm going to, I'm just essentially going to use the hive lights. So what, what the hive lights are is three of them. Uh, bottom right hand corner is a uh, gold, so that hits the the gold, and then uh, top left hand corner is blue, and then top right hand corner is a little touch of red. You'll see it on the top of the fighter. There it is. So we can change that to purple. We can change it to whatever color we want. And then what we have we set it have it set up. It only affects the, the highlights. So whatever the white highlights were, we're gonna colorize them. And that makes it look like, you know, really cool stuff is going on. And we can change those lights around. And we can give them different values and different percentages and different and being a, it's awesome. And that is, I think, really a great not, I wouldn't say a final step, but probably a final one for these wallpapers anyway. Uh, there's other things we could do if we were going to print or if they were going to be super high resolution or uh, 
taken into posters, but uh, for wallpapers, we can do, it pretty much makes everything feel like it's the same picture. So in a composition like this, it's vitally important, I think. They don't look like pieces. They look like they were photographed, you know, coming out of a, out of a ship and on their way somewhere. So that's kind of cool. Again, it's basic, basic color values, uh, blue, uh, cool, hot, red. It works really, really well. And not so much on this one, though. So I'm not 100% satisfied with the way this is finishing up. But part of the problem is, uh, is recording it. Those controls didn't come up the way I'd like. So I'm going to leave it the way it is. I think it's pretty good. And then the final touch is giving this sucker a name. You can see where I have the, the master set up. And put this one in the middle. I haven't done one of those yet. So we're going to call this. Let's call it um, doo -doo -doo Squadron. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, we'll do a little bit of a tip to the hat to the new fighter squadrons. Because that's kind of cool. And we'll call this Sucker Squadron. And there it is. Squadron. Yeah, it's nice. Thank you guys for being here and for listening to me ramble on about how to do this. I'd appreciate if you take a moment and support my Patreon. Thank you very much. And I look forward to doing more of these. Uh, be sure to give me some feedback in the comments and take care. Stay frosty. Bye.